Conservative Book Club members, thank you for listening to our weekly author interview podcast series. I'm Chris Malagisi, Editor-in-Chief of the Conservative Book Club, and we have a very special guest with us here today, Craig Shirley, the author of the new book, Reagan Rising, The Decisive Years, 1976 to 1980. I know probably a lot of you know Craig, but just in case, Craig is the author of three critically acclaimed uh, best-selling books on President Reagan, including Rendezvous with Destiny, Reagan's Revolution, and Last Act. He's the founder of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs and has been named the first Reagan scholar at Eureka College, which was Ronald Reagan's alma mater, where he taught a course titled Reagan 101. His books have been hailed as the definitive works on the Gippers campaigns of 1976 and 1980. And he's also a member of the Board of Governors of the Reagan Ranch, Eureka College Board of Trustees, and has lectured at the Reagan Library. The London Telegraph even called Shirley the best of the Reagan biographers. And Shirley and his wife, Serene, reside in Lancaster, Virginia, and they are the parents of four children. Uh, it's The book's already getting a lot of wonderful praise. Uh, John Hubush, who's the executive director at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation, has a great quote about the book that I just wanted to read quickly. There are few historians, if any, better qualified to write on Ronald Reagan than Craig Shirley. His previous works on the life and times of Ronald Reagan have already established him as the nexus of insight into our 40th president. So, a lot of great praise. Craig, congratulations, welcome, and thank you for joining the Conservative Book Club again. Oh, you bet, Chris. Thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, Craig, we're happy to have you, and uh, we, you're, you just told me you were at the Reagan Ranch the, uh, yesterday and today, right? I was at the Reagan Library last night uh, in Simi Valley, and then I'm at the Reagan Ranch uh, this afternoon. Uh, and then in a couple of days, I'm headed to uh, Eureka College and doing a uh, book signing and lecture there as well. That's wonderful, Craig. Well, Craig, give us a little background about uh, the 1976 presidential campaign and how it propelled Reagan to win in 1980. Well, you know, it, the, the, it was a very, very close contest. Uh, Gerald Ford, of course, was the, was the incumbent, though, unelected president of the United States, won the nomination, but he only, out of 2,259 uh, delegate votes cast in Kansas City in August of 76, Ford won by 67 votes. Um, it was uh, it, it was maddeningly, maddeningly close for uh, Reagan. He barely lost, and had there not been hijinks in the New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio delegations, he may well have won the nomination. Uh, but uh, he gives an, uh, an impromptu speech at the end of the uh, convention um, uh, where Ford asks him to come down and, and uh, try to heal the party. Reagan does more than that. He, um, he gives this awe-inspiring, uplifting speech about America and about the future uh, that really propels him into the race for 1980, especially after Ford lost to Jimmy Carter. Uh, and Reagan ran for four years and never looked back. And that's what this book is about. It's about those unreported wilderness years. You know, like Churchill had his own wilderness years. Uh, other politicians have. So did uh, Ronald Reagan from 76 to 80 because he was looking at the world differently. He was uh, presenting issues differently. He was taking advantage of it. New issues were uh, coming to fruition. There was a real conservative, uh, creative revolt in the land between Proposition 13 and referendum and uh, uh, the grassroots uh, uprising over the Panama Canal treaties and many other issues that uh, Reagan took uh, front uh, center stage on. Oh, these, and these, I don't want to ruin too much of the book here, but I would be curious to know a little bit more about some of the things that he specifically did to keep himself um, in the limelight. You talk about his speech at CPAC the next year. And, yeah, um, talking the, about a new Republican Party. The new Republican Party. Um, and you talked about, too, about how uh, Reagan, uh, in a big, widely televised debate between Bill Buckley and him about the, the Panama Canal treaties. Can you That's tell right. us just a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, of course, Reagan was leading the charge. Uh, Jimmy Carter was pushing the Panama Canal treaties to, to give over control of the Panama Canal uh, to uh, the, to uh, Panama, the country of Panama. And uh, like every school child, Reagan had been raised to believe that the uh, Panama Canal was one of the seven wonders of the world, like uh, all American school children. Uh, you know, and he got a lot of traction in the, in the 76 campaign, campaigning against the treaties by saying, we built it, we paid for it, it's ours, and we're going to keep it. 
Uh, and uh, Ford was intending on giving the Panama Canal uh, over to um, uh, to uh, Panama to turn it over, but then he he stopped when it was becoming politically dangerous for him. So Carter picked up on it, and Reagan was the national leader of the campaign to stop the uh, giveaway of the Panama Canal treaties. Um, uh, he and Bill Buckley uh, went to uh, South Carolina, and of course Bill was supporting uh, the Panama Canal Treaty, so they had a, a famous debate, a uh, 90-minute debate on, live on PBS in front of a live audience at the University of South Carolina, and their seconds were, uh, in the, it, was, it was Buckley versus Reagan, Buckley's second was a young columnist by, by the name of George F. Will, yeah. <laughs> and Reagan's, Reagan's uh, second was an admiral by the name of uh, John McCain II, uh, of course John McCain's father, so uh, this was pretty heady stuff and pretty substantial uh, stuff to put front and center. It really impressed the American people on how serious a purpose the, the conservative movement had become. I, I tell you, anybody who is a Ronald Reagan or Bill Buckley aficionado, if you've not seen this debate, it's on YouTube. It's one of the most enthralling things to see Reagan and Buckley go head to head yeah. and disagree on something. It just, yeah. It's just—it's one of those exciting thi- little little treasures. Well, but, with, but with great humor too. Yep. Oh, very much. And I think Pat yeah. Buchanan was a young Pat Buchanan was in that in that debate too. Um, yeah, she was also a uh, he was also one of Reagan's uh, seconds. Yeah. Well, Craig, what do we learn new in your book than we haven't maybe learned in other Reagan biographies before? Well, the, the, the Reagan truly was in the wilderness, and many of the party establishment had cast him aside. Not that they're ever enthralled with him anyway. Uh, and that really, it was the, it was the outpouring from the American people that impelled Reagan to run once again in 1980. Not because the elites wanted him to, not because the uh, the columns wanted him to, not because the political and media establishment wanted to, but wanted him to. But the American people wanted him to. Uh, and and that's really why he ran in 1980 because of the tremendous outpouring. He got um, everywhere he went, from cops to uh, bell captains to housewives uh, and firefighters and everybody in between, once he uh, left the campaign in 1976. And I think that's what really uh, convinced him he needs to, he needed to run one more time. Of course, age was a big issue. He had to deal with that. His conservatism, the fact that he'd lost twice, he had lots of big obstacles to overcome. Um, and, and the party was behind some... You know, real heavyweight contenders, everybody from Howard Baker to George Bush to Bob Dole to John Connolly. It was a pretty impressive field taken out of Reagan for the nomination. But he changed his presentation, not his basic conservatism, but how he presented it. Uh, and he also uh, campaigned tirelessly. He was almost ubiquitous because he had radio commentaries every day. He had news campaign columns twice a, a week. And he was everywhere from testifying on Capitol Hill to appearing on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. <laughs> well, Craig, I know I know you're a big conservative movement guy, and I I, I couldn't help but thinking about when uh, reviewing your book. What I, I'd love to know what lessons can the conservative movement learn from Reagan's story and from your book, especially in light of the Donald Trump phenomenon that we find ourselves in. The practicality of idealism. That's what you would learn from uh, Ronald Reagan is, is that he didn't believe that uh, in, in focus groups and in, you know, the poll testing and stuff like that. He believed he was right, and if he had a microphone and an audience, he believed that if he, if he had enough time, he could convince that audience of uh, the righteousness of his positions. Um, you know, he really never was interested in the, the polling numbers or things like that. He was more interested in talking to people and, 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 and talking about his ideas, things like that. So um, that he was kind of a throw back in a way because he had a campaign staff but they never told him governor you can say this you can't say that you know one time uh john sears is his erstwhile campaign manager tried to tell me he couldn't articulate his his position on abortion and um and reagan just yelled at him he said look it's my position damn it so i'm going to say what i want to say <laughs> um uh so uh, there was no you, you could talk to reagan you could uh, plead with reagan but you couldn't push reagan because he'd push right back well, it's amazing, and a lot of lessons to learn, especially in the Donald Trump phenomena. And and Craig, we were so yeah. happy for you. And John Meacham too wrote the forward. I just want to note that too. He's one of our uh, one of our favorite authors too here at the Conservative Book Club. Craig, c- congratulations Great. again, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. 
Oh, my pleasure, Chris. Thank you so much for asking me. Well, Conservative Book Club members, make sure to check out Craig Shirley's uh, author page that we have on the site and check out and buy his new book, Reagan Rising, The Decisive Years, 1976 to 1980. Craig, thank you again so much. Thank you, Chris.